Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Or, as somebody recently commented, apparently YouTube picks it up as um, Welcome to Ultimate Abnormal Dreadnoughts. Which I think in some situations is actually quite accurate. Today I'm doing a scenario by Darth Vindar. You know him as one of the naval architects and he has already sent in quite a few scenarios. And they have been good, all of them. Two completely different ship designs have been created to make the pride of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. A deep rivalry between the Old Guard and the more German-inspired New Guard has decided, naval, has decided the Naval Academy. Worse still, Emperor Otto von Habsburg has stepped in and has forced his own will on both competing designs. The Emperor has dictated that the pride of the fleet must have the ludicrous wedding cake turret configuration of A, B, C, X, Y, Z. In order for this to work, to satisfy the Emperor a standard barbette, paired with a tall secondary barbette with a 9-inch gun fitted on that. That's how you build that A, B, C, X, Y, Z uh, formation. It is the only way to have a triple main gun armament in the manner that the Emperor will accept, so it must be done. However, this, while, however, while this already makes things difficult for further speculations, um, they go along with each design. It's 1938, and the Spanish Civil War is in full swing as Europe is clearly divided with communists, East and Democrats, West, and the Central Powers acting as a buffer state between the two. The last bastion of fascism still rests in Italy, however. Today, this will come to an end. German agents have contacted the Italian king and have arranged for the assassination of Mussolini. However, while the army remained most loyal to the king, part of the navy has gone rogue and is threatening to cause chaos across the Adriatic Sea. You must take the pride of the Austro-Hungarian fleet and a support fleet to end this threat now. If the pride of the fleet sinks, you automatically lose. Now, I have two different options for this particular build. I can go with either a battlecruiser or a battleship. If I go with a battlecruiser, it's going to be the Miklos Horti. Um, it's a battlecruiser with the most advanced hull, 47,000 ton displacement, 15 or 16 inch guns, 30 knot speed, medium range, uh, bulkheads at many or greater, and a fairly high amount of armor thickness. If I go with the Habsburg, I get a monumental battleship of enormous power. It's a modernized dreadnought with maximum displacement. It has belt armor, secondary turret armor must be 15 inch or more, medium range, maximum bulkheads, and an armament of 15 or 16 inch guns, but no quad turrets. All casemate slots must be filled with 8 inch guns. I'm gonna go with the battlecruiser. It's been a while since I designed a battlecruiser, so let's go with that. Now, the modernized battlecruiser at a displacement of 47,000 tons, so that is the maximum. Speed at 30 knots. Um, it doesn't say 30 knots or greater, it just says 30 knots, so I'm going to stick to that. It has a minimum range of medium range, so that's good. And bulkheads, well, consider it's a battlecruiser, I'm going to go for maximum. If somebody penetrates this ship and it does start to flood, I'm going to be in trouble. So, make sure that that doesn't happen. Let's go for oil, force boilers, uh, and a slightly better shaft, crib for armor. And before I forget it, as opposed to my last video, I'm not going to go with Lid-Eye 2, I'm going to go with High TNT. Budget is not mentioned in the scenario, so should not really be a concern. Uh, armor, Citadel 5, I want to try and stay at range with this ship. I'm really not interested in closing in, because a battlecruiser is already a bit less powerful than a battleship. And at maximum range, at least the enemy has less chance to hit you. Now, the Emperor wants a wedding cake design. That means I have to have triple turrets. Uh, it's going to be pretty tricky to build on the bow of this battlecruiser. It's going to be pretty tricky. Medium superimposed barbette. Uh, a tall barbette for secondaries. Although... Maybe I have to build it like... Yeah, there we go. And I have to do the same, the, the same thing somewhere here on the stern like that, and then I can have the standard one. Now, considering I'm fighting a bunch of battle cruisers, I think 15-inch guns will be sufficient. So we're going to go with 15-inch triple. And unfortunately, that does not fit because it's too close. 
So I'll have to move this thing a bit farther forward. That one, oh, a bit farther back, I was going to say, but it doesn't want to fit. That's unfortunate. Because I was rather hoping that I could go with a, um, <clears throat> a medium, but maybe I have to go with an enlarged barbette. But those things are about 130 tons heavier. Oh well, so be it. Can I still put that secondary toll barbette now? No? Well, that sucks. Um, standard superimposed barbette. And then the secondary. Yes, there we go. So it has to be the standard superimposed barbette. Then this thing can fit and we can put the 15 inch center lines on. And now to fit this thing up, um, a couple of nine inch turrets as was mandated. So nine inch over there and nine inch over there. Whoa, you can even have them here? Are you kidding? It doesn't want to turn very well, but yes. What the hell? No, thank you. Um, I still have to add some more stuff like a funnel. Maybe a mega funnel is a bit much. Considering I'm also using forced boilers. What about induced boilers? 82. 88. Uh, forced. And balanced, 90%. Might suit my needs if I go for the Mega Funnel 3. 95%. I'll take that. Now then, I have a, uh, a decent amount of armament when it comes to fighting bigger ships. But I still happen to have a bit of a problem when it comes to smaller ships. Also, I have to shift this a bit farther back. Can I shift the whole thing? Yes, there we go. And this thing can go all the way back there. Or actually, no, let's put it over here so it allows for a couple of turrets to be put on. Let's just go for some 8-inch. Hold on. Why? Why won't that fit? It fits when you put it on sideways. It looks like this little thing up here, whatever that is, is just too high. But a 6-inch works. And so does a 7-inch. Alright, 7-inch it is. That's a nice field of fire for those 7-inch guns. Unfortunately, not quite reaching the bows. So to make sure that I have some sort of cruiser defense there, I'll have to go with a couple of turrets over here. Sometimes I get questions asking how to rotate turrets. Have them selected and press R or T, depending on which way you want to turn. That's all you have to do. Now, there is still some more that I have to pay attention to. Um, I have to have an armor minimum thickness of 12.6 inches of belt armor. I have 118% armor quality. Um, so, let's say 12.6... Um, I'm just going to have to draw up a calculator here. 12.6 divided by 1.18. No, sorry, by 2.18. Because I get 100% uh, armor quality. It needs to be 5.7 inches of belt armor, so that's okay. I need to have 4.7 inches of deck armor. I am definitely achieving that. And deck extended doesn't say anything, but turret says at least 14. Which, again, with an almost 118 or almost 120% bonus, should be fine. So turret armor is sufficient. Um, nothing was said about the secondary. Maybe a bit more turret top armor. Although, I'm not really fooling anybody with 4 inches of armor. It's not really going to do that much. Let's reduce torpedo armament or torpedo armor a bit. And still put on some secondaries. Because I'm fairly, fairly happy with these 7-inch guns. I think that they're going to be very helpful. But the enemy has a lot of destroyers. Now, I do have a couple of light cruisers which can help. But they're only going to do so much. And if this ship happens to come across a couple of those uh, destroyers up close, I want to ensure that they can actually hold their own. 
I'm not sure how well those are going to turn. They look so close up to the superstructure that I would rather have them a bit farther out. A bit like that. This does slightly limit the firing arc for the forward 7-inch gun, but I can still make that work because I have these to back up. All right, hold these in position, turn the other way. Okay, so now we have, for backup, 12 5-inch barrels per side. That's a, a pretty potent backup. Let's see if I can balance the ship out perfectly. Yep. Roll and pitch are going to be a bit less fortunate. But the game for this particular hull is fairly limiting when it comes to the main tower. And I would love to draw the thing a bit farther forward. But I don't think that's going to do too much for my pitch. Um... Ideally, I would have everything located on the center of mass, so around here. But if I do that, then this turret setup won't work anymore. Because I would draw this thing farther back, and then I get balance issues. Hold on, though. Um, let's say that I do that. Maybe one less, otherwise that turret's going to be a little unhappy. Move the tower a bit farther. Now, I have a little bit of longitudinal weight offset, but my pitch is now 39.9, as opposed to what it was, which was um, 41. At 41.1, I have minus 10% base accuracy. At 39.9, I still have minus 10% base accuracy. What do I need to do to ensure that this thing gets happy? Because I don't really see that many stats changes. If I draw this thing closer in... Yeah, then the pitch goes down, but I now have a longitudinal weight offset, so that thing starts to offset even more. I think that this is not really that useful. Uh, was it this thing that is impacting the balancing factor? Oh, hold on. Stay there. One one, holding at one one, point one. Come here, there. Now this thing still has a couple of uh, secondary slots, potentially three inch. No. Well, oh, this is mostly a last ditch weapon, the two inch. If something gets so close that I get into 2-inch weapon range, I'm going to probably be in a lot of trouble. But hey, I feel like if these slots are here, I want to use them. Right, pretty heavily armed battle cruiser. We're firing heavy shells. I'm intentionally using hydraulic turrets to save a little bit of weight there. As for ammo... I have 300 shells per gun, times 4, so that's 1,200. I suppose that that is going to be enough. Let's go with a bit of hydro. And um, let's see, what else would I like? What's my turning circle? Because it's a long boat. 885. Shaft 3, 772. Hawks, 726. That's better. That's a lot better. I like that. As for the rest, um, yep, check, 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 check. I'm not going to use torpedoes on this one, so that's fine. Let's go with a bit more deck armor. And a bit more turret top. And six and a half inches of conning tower armor. It gives me two tons. Ship is at least port and starboard side perfectly balanced. The pitch is not great, 42, giving me a minus 11% base accuracy, and this one's giving me another 9.6. But I believe that there's not that much that I can do to fix that, short of overhauling the whole ship. So, let's rename this. This is not the uh, Montecuccioli. This is the uh, Miklos 
Party. Now this ship is so important that if this one sinks, the entire mission is immediately lost. So gotta keep this ship alive. Really curious what the AI went with, battle cruiser wise, because I figure that these are going to be my most well, my most dangerous adversary. They also have a heavy cruiser more. They have the same amount of light cruisers, but they get four times the number of destroyers. Hold on for a moment. What's my own ship? What's my own escorts? The Wolfsburg. Um, pretty standard layout for a heavy cruiser. Not terribly survivable. Nice use of 4-inch guns, loads of 2-inch. Triple barrel, that's good. But you have to get really close to the enemy. And port and starboard torpedo tubes. 37 knots, ranging 12-9. See, if you have torpedo tubes like these, I would make them fast. Because I, if I'm using this, I'm probably side-by-side -side with another ship. Sonar 1. Okay. Light cruisers, Teodo and Fasana. Minimum bulkheads, living on the edge. Nice amount of 6 inch guns. 2 inch guns and more 2 inch. Sonar, 3. Good turning circle. Very nice weapon systems against, or weapon platforms against the destroyers. And finally, my destroyers. We have the Uskoke and the Uskoke D1. Creative. 4-inch guns, maximum bulkheads, decent speed for a DD, a little on the low end, actually, at 33 knots. A fair amount of 3-inch guns, another 3-inch gun, and torpedoes, which can hit at 21.7. Not terribly damaging at 20-inch, but pretty stealthy. Minus 43% visibility. Now, the enemy battlecruisers. What are we looking at here? A very compact ship. Look at how close these turrets are together. Um, a pretty light secondary armament. And another couple of 14-inch guns. So she has 12 14-inch guns. But then again, they carry two battle cruisers in this formation. Heavy cruisers. Uh, that is 8-inch guns. 12 of them. And some secondaries, but not that many. Light cruisers I cannot see. And this is their destroyer. Interesting use of the, the what I think are three inch guns side by side. Yeah, three inch guns. Torpedo launcher pretty high up, only a single one. But it is a quintuple, so five. Orientation towards the enemy fleet. They're over to our starboard. I can hit them out at a range of 28-2. And how far are these guys? Not in range yet. Alright, since the DDs have such good torpedo range, I want to tell them not to follow. We're instead going to immediately turn to starboard with both the DDs, and they're outside the formation, which is good. So you're going to go that way. And I'm manually using the rudder control, because otherwise there's a really high chance that the AI collision avoidance kicks in and decides that this is a great moment to suddenly start changing course as the Miklos Horti gets in the way. The heavy cruisers screening and the light cruisers following. Just follow the battle cruiser. We can do 30 knots with the battle cruiser, the light cruisers can do 35, the heavies can do 36. Good. Now I want to stay mostly at range while the DDs close the distance and figure out if they can torpedo the enemy. It will come down to how the enemy is maneuvering. Because if they're maneuvering, they're maneuvering away. This is the heavy cruiser group. 29 clicks. Somebody's colliding. Not my ships. Let's go out and hunt some battle cruisers. They're firing. How are they firing already? Different propellant? 
Oh, they're firing at the heavy cruiser. Right, that makes sense, because the heavy cruiser is closer to them and thus in range. Okay. I do want to maintain the heavy cruisers as a screening force. Since the AI in Alpha 10 seems to be quite a bit better, I want to stick those heavy cruisers on one on the port side and one on the starboard side of the uh, Miklos. It's not necessary on the port side, but that's just how the screening thing works. I just hope that these things don't take any kind of a hit, because they're not really meant to. Not with that level of protection. Now, if your battle cruisers could just casually move towards the destroyers, then we can have some fun. I am getting quite jumpy about the ability of the heavy cruisers to not die. New plan. Follow the Miklos. Uh, follow the heavy cruiser group. This is probably going to throw my formation out of whack for a while. But I'd rather have that than start losing heavy cruisers early. Eh? Because they're just too valuable. They can be a really useful asset in the fight against those DDs. And they have a lot of them. Lots of incoming shells. Oh, they're targeting the DD. Interesting choice. This does put the battle cruisers into range, and not just them. Unfortunately, it's only the first DD that's actually in a torpedo angle. But this is too good of an opportunity to pass up. 19 clicks. If I don't hit the lead ship, I might hit the second. Oh, sorry, I'm not even targeting the battle cruisers. I'm targeting the heavy cruisers. Might not even be that bad of an idea. Because if the heavy cruisers go, I can be a bit more aggressive in the fight against the destroyers. So far, nobody has hit anything. The DDs are actually making a plan to try and get into range. But the thing is, we're heading away from the battle cruisers. I'm going to turn that way. Look at this! A heavy cruiser is perfectly in formation. Light cruisers slowed down a bit and then fell into formation as well. Well done, AI. I know I've given the AI a lot of shit over the years. Well, year. Uh, let's say over the last couple of months, because their formation system was just terrible. But it seems like they've upped their game. The devs really did well with this thing. I also like how the battle cruisers are staying at range. I mean, I don't like it for my torpedo odds, but I do like it because it fits with their profile. It fits with the way that the weapon or that the platform is supposed to be used. We have a DD closing in. So the 9 and the 7 inch guns are engaging the DD. Hold on. That is interesting, because I didn't... What DD is this one targeting? This one? Oh, hold on. You're just repeating a destroyer of mine. I happen to catch that. Not even intentional. Uh, starboard turn. Once again, we're going to try and torpedo the battle crew. No, the heavy cruisers. Is your torpedo launcher at a weird angle? Yeah, a bit. I need to be angling away from the target. Because the torpedo launchers need enough lead. That's probably it. Go on. That should give you... Oh, shit. That should give you plenty of lead. Fortunately, that was an overpen. Come on. Come on, guys. Target and launch. They are in range. 
They will continue to be in range. Smoke. Oh. Not great. Oh, you have launched. And you haven't. What the hell? Why did the D1 actually drop torps and this one didn't? And moreover, where are they? I don't know. It was a, yeah, it was a pretty heavy shell that impacted that destroyer of mine. And another. I'm going to pull these guys away from the fight for a while. Hoping to get the other guy back up. I have also done some damage against their destroyer. And it looks like the heavy cruisers and maybe the lights in a little bit of time are also going to pitch in. Yeah, there we go. Many bulkheads though. Current torpedo lock on nothing. Because they're not in range. Good. That means that these DDs are not a problem. I can pretty safely ignore them for now. And just let the heavy cruisers and the secondaries from the Miklos work away on them. In the meanwhile, for some reason, the other DD has also been selected as a valuable target. I don't exactly know why. Because I would rather finish off a battle cruiser or a heavy. But neither of those are in range. Uh, I'm going to tell the main weapons to cease fire. Until we have a more apt target, a more suitable target. I might be able to intercept the DDs. So just turn the whole fleet towards the destroyers. While they're not under cover from heavier ships. And get rid of these things. So that I don't have to continuously dodge torpedoes from everybody. My DD status? Pretty okay. Pretty okay. Unfortunately, their speed is limited to 26 knots. Not great, but so be it. I'm going to have these guys continue to shadow the heavies. These guys have minimum bulkheads and the battle cruisers. It's targeting the battle cruiser. What sort of shells do you have? Heavy shells. Propellant. White powder. Oh, hold on. I hit something. One of my torpedoes hit a destroyer. And it died. Okay. I don't know when exactly that happened, but I'll take it. Now, this battle cruiser is in range. The San Giacchino. I hope I'm doing that right, Italy. 1% chance to hit, 72% chance to pen. Just open fire on that battle cruiser. And uh, in the meanwhile, look out for torpedoes. Because some of these guys might have you targeted. But I am moving bow in, so I'm a pretty slim target. What I'm surprised about is that that guy got hit with a torpedo. Considering that they have advanced sonar systems, sonar 3, and a pretty decent turning circle. So, in a way, they should have known better. But sometimes the AI does turn the wrong way. Jeez, 29 clicks out. Let's get a bit closer. We're hitting some torpedo systems on one of the destroyers here, the uh, Ardito. She's starting to flood. She did just launch torpedoes against the battle cruiser. We're going to turn the whole formation to port. Mop up the DDs first. Mop up the DDs first, and then we'll have a look at what the rest of the fleet can do. And this is what I want. The light cruisers are now pitching in. What's the range from the battle cruisers to the heavies? 26 clicks, so they can more or less hit me, but now the formation is going to change. Now the formation is going to change the screening force. And the same thing 
for the light cruisers. Because now I want these guys very close to the battle cruiser. As now there are DDs around. And those 4 inch and maybe 2 inch guns are going to be very handy. Let's get some damage in on the destroyers. A couple of good hits. She did get twice... Two flooding hits, but she's not acting like it. Just a bit of structural integrity damage. DDs. Yeah, I'm using them to attract fire from the heavy cruisers. To sort of whittle down the amount of ammo that these guys have. And so far it seems to be working, but for the safety of these DDs, let's smoke up. And get back out of range, because they fire pretty rapidly. They don't carry that much ammo. Reduced ammo shells, yeah. Now, there was a torpedo salvo launched at the heavy... Uh, sorry, at the battle cruiser. But I don't exactly know where it went. Considering that I changed course to port with the whole formation. I think we're fine. The Ardito is remarkable in its ability to take fire and not really be affected. And their battle cruisers are probably unscathed. Yeah. Good lord. Try to catch that one. For some reason, some of these DDs are once again either seemingly stationary or... See, this one's still moving at speed with smoke. But then you have the destroyer over here. The Irrequieto. Which is not doing anything. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why are these ships stuck? Nice firing line here with the heavy cruisers and the battle cruisers. Light cruisers also engaging the destroyer. Unfortunately not doing that much damage though. Fasana only scoring one hit so far. Now I did take some return fire uh, from the DD. Not terribly worried about that, but this thing did launch torpedoes. Ardito seemingly going down soon. I quite like the design. <laughs> the elevation on the barrels is uh, significant. How are the DDs? Ah, they're fine. They're fine. How are your heavy cruisers? 858. I'm not sure though why the battle cruisers are more or less running away. I don't understand. Because I don't think that they have that much reason to run away. Let's put a times five speed. Collision with the light cruisers. Guys, what you doing? Oh, and the heavy cruisers are still set to follow. I didn't turn those to screen. Oh well, in this case it might come in handy. As it means the whole formation will avoid the torpedo threat. Come on. Finish off those destroyers. Did the other one launch? No. And there goes the Irrequieto. Next is the Articlieri. Already getting one engine damaged. I'm going to turn off the main guns until I get closer. Because I have 783 shells left. But there are still quite a few heavy cruisers and battle cruisers that need sinking. Whoa, that was fast. Alright, now we're going to mop up this DD here. There is a torpedo threat, but the entire formation seems to be fine, including over here the light cruiser. Fasana. That one died. Uh, do I need to go after the Intrepido? No. Or I could order the light cruisers to do it. You guys mop up the destroyer. That is going to cut through their amount of destroyers pretty quickly. 
The heavy cruiser is now 32 clicks away, and the battle cruiser 37. Cowardly Italian ships this time. Maybe the AI went a bit overboard this time around when it comes to maintaining distance. Because they're going a bit too far away. I wonder if my DDs can safely engage this one, the Animoso. Does the heavy cruiser seem to be heading away? Yeah, let's try it. Is that thing moving? I don't think so. Alright, let's go hunt down a battle cruiser. Range 26.5. Speed, all of it. 30 knots. And it's easy for the heavy cruisers to keep up, considering they can do significantly more. Panther, 1.5k damage done. Wolfsburg, 1-1. One, one. The Miklos, 3k. Um, how? Oh, the 7-inch guns and the 5s. And even the 2s have pitched in, but their damage was not that good. Now, are these light cruisers torpedo threats? No, they're not. I mean, yes, they carry torpedo tubes, but I don't really consider them that much of a threat. Engage the Augusto. I might have to keep an eye on torpedo launches here. As the Augusto seems to be thinking about it. Chance to hit, 5%. There we go. Time for me to smoke up. And for you to start sinking. She just torpedoed. Come around. She's no longer really that much of a threat, considering that she just dropped her last set of torpedoes in the water. But it's still not really something that I want to have sailing around here. There we go. Miklos is back in the fight. Doing more damage against the Augusto than probably both of the DDs currently. Yeah, they're starting to add up, these guys. 437, we're gonna come around again. Flash fire on the DD, and she's done. Now we have gained a bit too much distance on the heavy cruisers. So it's time to turn back. The next DD, the Ostro. Fortunately for me, not yet into torpedo range. The light cruisers, hold on a moment. Intrepido might have launched against the lights. I'm not sure when she did, though. I think that, considering the reload time, if she did launch against the light cruisers, they would already be dead. So we're going to turn. I'm just going to murder this destroyer here. In the meanwhile, it seems like the heavy... Sorry, not the heavy, the battle cruiser is getting some hits... Um, yeah, just put the mains on that and open fire. Keep an eye on the Ostro. I really don't want to get torped. DDs are fine. Heavy cruisers have a range of 16? 18. Okay. I feel like in the last two or three videos in Alpha 10, I'm doing a bit better with my formations. The light cruisers, I'm using more as DD hunters, hunting down isolated targets, like, for example, the Intrepido here. But also in the previous video, just hunting down a lone destroyer or a lone head light cruiser. And now I can just accelerate back to 35 knots and tell these guys to try and link up again with the battle cruiser group. So as not to have too much micromanagement, I'm going to tell them to follow the heavy cruisers in, because that's probably going to be the first thing that they encounter. Although, I'm not sure if they're going to be doing... Yeah, they're accelerating to 30 knots. If I set them to loose, can reach their top speed. But they may shake their formation out a bit. Yeah. You guys are free to go to loose formation and speed up as much as possible to regain contact with the fleet. I seem to have done absolutely no damage against our battlecruiser. 
That's better. Damage to the main gun. On the bow. Ideally, flash fires. There's another hit, but barely a pen. I'm thinking ricochets. Yeah, 39 degrees. DDs. More or less on par with the rest of the fleet. Keep in mind that I've done 12,000 damage and taken very little in return. I've sunk quite some of their destroyers, while not really losing any of my own ships yet. For some reason the light cruisers... Oh, there we go. No, they're going to try and slow down. Come on, guys. You're allowed to go full speed. You're undamaged, right? Oh, can you only get to 29? No, you can do 34. I don't get this. What if I just order them this way? Yeah, there we go. They were going to stick to 29 knots because they were following the heavy cruiser formation, which was led by the battle cruiser. And because the battle cruiser can only do 30 or 29, since a little bit of dam battle damage was inflicted, she's now, or the light cruisers were refusing to go at full speed. A little bit of flooding has impacted the uh, speed of the San Giaccio. Sorry, the San Giaccino. Let's see if the destroyers can catch up. I kind of doubt it. If this battle cruiser is doing max speed. I doubt it. We got the Duca d'Aosta over there. I'm just ricocheting. I have half my ammo remaining. New target, light cruiser. It's not really that much of a threat. But I feel like I'm more likely to do damage against the light cruiser than the battle cruiser. Fire and flooding. Maximum bulkheads. No, sorry, that's my ship. Minimum bulkheads on the light cruiser. Also, if I finish off the light cruiser, I'll be able to bring my destroyers that much closer. Another flooding hit. Avoiding torpedoes from the Ostro. She just launched very recently. So I can probably still zigzag. And avoid any kind of torpedoes. Light cruisers, 23 clicks from the main formation. It's going to take them a while to get here. There we go. Turn back. So far, so good. Hold on. The heavy cruisers here are either screening for the battle cruiser all the way over there, the Menorca, or they're coming back in order to assist. The San Giacchino, which is now under attack. They might be interacting or reacting with the destroyers that I have. Checking for torpedoes. Yep, there they are. No, shit. I keep misclicking because I'm so used to that being uh, the split division. These engines will get repaired. Serious damage on the Ostro now. Killing her off before she gets repaired. Uh, rejoin the heavy cruisers. There you go. 20%. Time to smoke up again because the heavies are now starting to counteract and pushing without I'm doing with the DDs. Um, just torp them. If you're feeling like it. Just torp them. Battle cruiser, 600 shells left. Barely doing damage against the battle cruiser still. Seems like the Uskoka has been hit. Torpedoes away on the battle cruiser. Good. It's a small salvo. I'm not likely to hit the heavy cruisers with it. But the real battle crew or the battle cruiser is the real prize. So that's what I'm trying to hit. And on top of that, these things don't have that many bulkheads. Oh, they've also, they've also started stopped shooting. Right. 
How survivable are these? Not very. Okay. Can I hit the heavies? With a reasonable accuracy? Maybe. Unfortunately, the 9-inch guns, which would be a f perfect weapon to go after the uh, heavy cruisers. It's trying to run a little low. But my heavies carry... Yeah, they do carry the torpedo. They still have plenty of 7-inch ammo left. Save. Battle cruiser's the real threat. There's also another DD about. Target the Animoso. Battle cruiser's not actively shooting me, so I can close in a bit. Animoso detected the torpedoes. Did you now? Would you like to educate me as to where they went? Oh, here they are. So you can detect those from a fair distance away. Sonar 3? Yeah. The battle cruiser seems to be turning to port. Possibly to evade the torpedoes. I still have 20 torpedoes left on both destroyers combined. It'd be great if this thing turned back to starboard to eat a torpedo, but it looks like it's not that hungry for torps. But it is... Oh, shit. I didn't mean to fuse those formations. Um, split... Panther, you guys detach. Ah, oh, crap. You're supposed to be in this formation. 12 kilometers out. Fire. Heavy cruisers are laying down quite a barrage of 8 inch shell fire. But I do expect them to go silent pretty soon. Because they're going to run a little low on ammo. What's the chances of doing damage with a heavy cruiser against theirs? Not great. Not at this range, anyway. Secondaries, please continue on the Animoso. Um, heavy cruiser, secondaries, 4-inch guns. Range? 9-6. You guys are not in range yet. Continue to follow the battle cruiser. Please. No, not screen. Follow. Come on. Div 1. Follow. Div 4. There we go. Good damage on the battle cruiser now. She's starting to flood. She is still at a very good angle for my shells. Considering I have a pen chance of 100%, I can probably inflict a few more flooding hits. Force her to slow down and make sure that she doesn't have anywhere to go while the torpedoes finish the ship off. And then I have a long race ahead of me to catch the Menorca. Sorry, Menorca. These guys have a chance of 9%. Okay, target the destroyer with everything you got. Yeah, she's definitely starting to flood. 80%. Flooding on the Miklos. Fire on the uh, San Giacchino. Unfortunately, my angle is working against me a little bit. Another flooding, but bul bulkhead should fix that. What's your chance to pen me? 76%. Ricochet is not that good either. I can either pick. Do I ricochet more shells or do I get more guns to, on that target? I'm going to pick the second. The ship has miraculously managed to pump out all the water. Um, Anti-flood 2. Yeah, that's probably the fix. The light cruisers are getting quite close now. I'm going to have these guys chase down the destroyer since the heavy cruisers are on the other side. Carry on. The 9-inch guns are almost out of ammunition. Lovely. 
And considering that there's shell fire from a long distance away, the Menorca is engaging my battlecruiser. Damage to the main tower. The ship's down to 65% buoyancy. Now, if you guys have a scenario for me to play, by all means, send it in with the link down below in the description. Please don't send it in through the comment section. That does not work. Because then the comment section is going to get just flooded and flooded and flooded with uh, a lot of scenarios, and I don't want that. That's why I have my own special page slash website for it. Light cruiser status, range 10. I have to keep an eye on the battle cruiser's intent to deal with the light cruisers. I don't expect them to make a move, but you never know. And in the meanwhile, maybe the DDs can make sure that the battle cruiser here goes down. Hmm. 50 degree angle. And it's getting worse. The heavy cruisers are running low on ammunition and, as expected, have stopped firing. I'm down to about a third of my ammunition count. The battle cruiser is still firing with her 14 inch guns, still doing gam damage against the Miklos. In reverse, my ricochet chance is too high. I'm going to switch to high explosive, considering that AP will probably just bounce. That 14 inch is starting to add up. 11 clicks out. Turn and prepare to torpedo. Not yet, though. The other battlecruiser is still not very interested in this fight, still running away. Angle... Oh, ricochet is now very, very low. There we go. Rudder damaged, fire and flooding. I might not even need the torpedoes at this rate. Did the Animoso still launch torps? She did, against the light cruisers. Our turn. She is starting to flood. She's probably going to drown. 30% chance to hit. There we go. Fire. I'm probably going to have to pull some tricks to sink the other battle cruiser. Because I might not have the ammo for it. Come on. Below waterline hits. There we go. Flooding on the bow. And toast. Last hit caused some flooding on my ship, but I suppose I can survive that. Now we can butcher some heavy cruisers. 6.9 kilometer range, easy to hit. Light cruiser, status. I'm not seeing any reports that the light cruiser detected torpedoes, and the Animoso seems to have bigger issues. Yeah, I think the lights can handle that. AI control. The San Marco just took a couple of big hits and she's already halfway down to flooding. Lots of systems are getting damaged in the Animoso. Another flooding on the bow. Another one. There we go. Ship down. Carlo, three. Structural integrity on the Miklos is down to 60%. She has taken a bit of a beating. She has taken 265 hits out of 400, sorry, 4,235 shells fired at her. And I think that most of those might have come in from the battle, no, from the heavy cruisers, considering their low count of ammunition. Most of the damage was done by 14-inch guns. Probably the other battle cruiser, that guy over there. Which, by the way, is something that I can now engage with the DDs. Light cruiser status, you guys are fine. Yeah, right. 
If you are going to pepper the heavy, cru oh, sorry, the battle cruiser, then at least use high explosive, because armor piercing is not going to do anything. Flash fire on the Carlo. She's good as done. Next up is the Sanita. Another flooding hit. The Italians are not getting any kills this time around. And the Miklos is doing a lot of work. Out of the 20,000 damage, she's done half. There's 1.3 on the Wolfsburg. Panther, 2.5. Light cruisers. Also pitched in quite nicely. 2.1. And the Fasana at 1.6. Jesus, are you guys trying to ram or something? There goes the Sanita. DDs, range, 11 clicks. Continue rushing into the target. How's she for ammo? Pretty good. 3 inch guns to keep destroyers and light cruisers alike at bay. But... Oh shit. Oh shit. That's not good. Fasana... Got way overzealous. Yep. I wasn't expecting the, the, the AI to start using those things as some sort of torpedo. That was never going to work. My torpedo can travel at 48 knots. If I try to torpedo the Menorca, sorry, the Menorca, I probably will hit her. And I think I'm going to have to use the destroyers because my battlecruiser is not capable of getting close enough. Not if this ship is maneuvering at full speed. That's the problem, she's too fast. I have taken a lot of damage and I can do 21 knots. Nevertheless, I've sunk the rest of the Italian fleet. Ow. Don't be like that. Come on. I don't get when this ship decides to launch and when it doesn't. Because the torpedo angle looks good. The ship is definitely in range. Considering I have a range of 21.7 and the ship is at 11. But it just refuses. Come on. What's your deal? I might have to let the Monarca live. Well, let it live. I mean, I don't really have a choice in the matter. The only ships fast enough to catch it are the heavy cruisers. They can do 36 knots. The battle cruiser can do 36 and a half. I'm just not sure if that's what she's doing. Yeah, I'm going to let this one go. I'm going to let the Monarca go. She was able to sink one of my light cruisers after the AI managed to push it way too close towards the, the, the battle cruiser. And the rest of the Italian fleet took a big bit, big, blah, big beating over here. Miklos Horthy down to 55% and 58% buoyancy. Ship served me very, very well. Most of the damage probably coming out of the 15-inch. Uh, 4,800. The 9-inch not that good. 729. 7 inch guns, 3000 damage, 5 inch guns, 1400, and the 2 inch guns, 87. Overall, successful design. Not terribly creative, but just efficient. Anyway, that'll be it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are on the video down below in the comment section. And if you really like my vids and want to support me, then please become a Patreon supporter for a couple of bucks a month. You'd really be helping me out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more videos.